Good evening. It's good to be back with you again on this Wednesday evening uh, by way of YouTube. It's a joy to be able to come and uh, enter into your life through the Word of God and to present to you a message from Scripture, a teaching that might be helpful and enlightening to you. Over the past six weeks, we've done a study entitled Sound Doctrine, that is, true teaching. What is the true teaching of the Word of God? We're going to follow that tonight with some true doctrine, true teaching, sound doctrine uh, on a few different subjects. And tonight we'll start with the fall of man and total depravity. Now that's a, that's a big word and uh, idea, concept, total depravity. And, and many times uh, Baptists are misunderstood and misrepresented on this subject because we don't believe that every man is so bad that he could never do anything that's considered good in the sight of man. But we believe that all the good that a man does while in an unconverted, unsaved state, uh, dead, separated from God, thus is not good in God's sight. It may be good in man's sight, but it's not good in God's sight. And that's the, that's the idea. Man is a depraved creature. He, he is a man that is uh, given over to sin. Now, the world opposes this because of man's false pride, and uh, uh, it's not honored by such a teaching. Man's false pride, we want to think high of ourselves. We want to think better of ourselves than what God does, and we want to think we're good, good people because we don't do some of the things other people do. Well, it's good we don't do some of the things other people do, but in the sight of God, we are still sinful creatures. We, we've still failed. We're depraved. Uh, that is, we're not totally good. Uh, man uh, was created uh, in God's image, upright and innocent. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27, it said, But God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him, male and female created he them creating the image of God. That doesn't mean a physical image as it does the triune nature of God. God is uh, uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one person revealed in three personalities. And we're body, soul, and spirit, one person with three different components that make us up. So uh, to say God looks like us, which one of us does he look like? Uh, it's not that. We're made in the image of God. That is, we're made in God's likeness in that we were a triune being. And when we were created, we were innocent and holy. Uh, when man was created, he was without sin. But Romans 5, uh, 12 says this about man in the fifth chapter of Romans and the uh, 12th verse. He, he says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For as by one man sin entered into the world. Uh, he, it came uh, voluntarily. Uh, he, it came uh, uh, as man through his voluntary transgression fell from his holy and innocent state with God. Uh, as by one man's sin entered into the world. Now you remember the story in Genesis 3. Uh, well, let, let me just read it. Genesis 3, uh, 1 through 7. Uh, he, he says this. Now the serpent was more subtle, that is cunning, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, what the woman Eve is having a debate with Satan. It's dangerous to debate with the devil. He's so much smarter, more cunning uh, than we are. Uh, and uh, he he's... He, she said, uh, when the devil tempted her to eat of the fruit, uh, said, you can't eat of all the trees in the garden. We can eat all of them. But the one in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge, good and evil, for in the day 
we shall die. She said, though, not only eat, we shall not touch it. Now, we don't have a record of God saying not touch it. He said, don't eat. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. <laughs> he laughed at her and said, you know that's not so, God. You're God's creation. God, God couldn't do away with you. For God doth know in the day you eat thereof that your then your eyes will be opened and you'll know as be as gods knowing good and evil. Said, well, if you eat that, He knows what's going to happen. You're going to be like a god. You're going to know good and evil. Wouldn't that be great? You know, said, no good and evil. Eve thought. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, though it was good to eat, it had a good taste. It was pleasant to eyes. It looked good. And the tree desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Uh, here, here you have the fall of man. For one man, sin entered into the world. And death by sin. God said you shall eat freely of every tree in the garden except the tree in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the day you eat of it, you will surely die. By voluntary transgression, he fell from his whole and innocent state. Now, the Bible said you shall surely die. Man didn't fall over that day physically, did he? As by one man sinned into the world and death by sin, for that all have sinned. What happened was something happened in the life of man that he was not familiar with. He was separated from God. That's spiritual separation, spiritual death. And when God said to Adam, you shall surely die, that day you eat, you'll die, something died within him. That innocence died. That holiness died. He was, he was guilty. He saw himself as naked. Why would all of a sudden he feel that it was wrong not to have clothing? And all of a sudden he sewed fig leaves together and hid himself from God. And when God come looking, he was hiding in the trees because he had done what God said not to do. You see, the whole human race, its future lays in the hand of Adam because Adam was created in the image of God and from Adam the woman was taken. So ever how Adam goes is how the human race is going to go. For as by one man, sin entered to the world. That's Adam. And death is the consequence. Now, not only is there the spiritual death that happens when we, we come to the knowledge of the fact that we've transgressed against God, we've sinned, but it's also that eternal death uh, that follows physical death. Now, physical death is not the biggest issue in the Scripture, although it is the result of sin. Our bodies decay and they die. But the real problem is if we're not saved, if we're not uh, forgiven of our sins before we leave this world then we're going to spend eternity cut off from God in a place called hell or the lake of fire. So here we are. We're created in the image of God, upright and innocent. And we voluntarily transgressed the word of God. We fell from the holy and innocent state in which we were created. And now we're under the condemnation by our own choice. Therefore, we say we are depraved. Now, the word depraved simply means marked by evil or corruption. We are evil we're corrupt. A total tendency to evil, corrupt, wicked, sinful, bad. Did anybody ever have to teach you to do bad? Not really. They had to teach us to do right. Why? Our natural tendency is to do wrong. Sin. By, by total depravity, we simply mean man's total makeup, soul, body, and spirit. Uh, no part is untouched by sin. Every part of man is touched. There's no good mixed with bad. Somebody said, oh, there's a little spark of good in everybody. All you got to do is fan it, and it, it'll come to the front. No, there is not a spark of good because man is dead in his trespasses and sin. In the book of Colossians, chapter 1, over in the New Testament, the book of Colossians, the first chapter, you find uh, this, Colossians 1, chapter 1, and verse 21, Colossians 1, 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. We've been cut off by wicked works, by sin, and now God through Jesus reconciles us. Ephesians chapter 2 
and verse 1 and says, And you who were dead in trespasses and sin. Spiritually dead. He's talking to living people. But you were dead in trespasses and sin. You who were dead are now made alive in Christ Jesus. We now have life in him. We who were dead, Ephesians 2, 1, are now alive in Jesus. The psalmist said it like this in Psalm 58, the 58th uh, Psalm. Take just a minute. Uh, Psalm 58 and verse 3. He says this, The wicked are estranged from the womb, and they go astray as soon as they're born, speaking lies. Men come out of this, into this world in a, with a nature of sin, and we come out speaking lies. That is, we come out with a sin nature. Isaiah says it like this in Isaiah, the 64th chapter. The 64th chapter of Isaiah. And verse 6. Isaiah 64, verse 6. But we're all as an unclean thing, unrighteous, sinful. And all of our righteousnesses, all of our righteous deeds and acts, all the good things we do are as filthy rags. That is, in the sight of God, he sees it all as filthy rags. And we do all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. God says, all the good things that you might think you do, all the good things you try to do, in his sight, is filthy rags. I didn't say that. Remember I said in the beginning, man, every man is not as bad as he could be in the sight of men, but in the sight of God, we're all in the same boat. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all under the condemnation of sin. We're depraved. We're condemned by our own choice of sin. Therefore, we say we're depraved, marked by evil or corruption. Then the fourth thing is we're under just condemnation. We deserve it. Uh, Romans one twenty said, uh, uh, "We're without excuse. Without excuse, we have no excuse. There's none doeth good, no, not one. We're we're under the the law. We're under we're under condemnation. We're without excuse." John three eighteen said, "But he that believeth on him, that is Jesus, is not condemned." But he that believes not is condemned already because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. It's not a case that we will be condemned one day. It's a case that we're condemned right now and without excuse before holy God because we know about Jesus, we've heard about Jesus, and we turned our backs on Jesus. We've rejected him, and we've not been saved. We've not been forgiven. Man, in it, the fifth thing that we'd say about depravity is man in his natural state can't please God. In the flesh, we can't please God. We can only please him through the work of the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter 8 and uh, verse 7, we find uh, these verses. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Carnal means fleshly. The fleshly mind, the, the, our, 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 our mind, our brain is uh, <coughs> carnally minded and for, to be <coughs> and for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Our, our, our natural mind is not subject to God and it can't be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. We can't please God in the flesh. But he, ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. He's speaking to the Christians at Rome. You're no longer in the flesh. You're in the spirit. You have spiritual life through Jesus Christ. If so, that it's the spirit of God dwell in you. If God's spirit dwells in you, then you have spiritual life. And you don't have to think like a fleshly mind would think. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. You see, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to him. That is, if the spirit of Christ doesn't dwell in you, you're not saved. He said when you're saved, the spirit of God comes in. It's, a, it, it's automatic. God moves in. Jesus said, I'll come in you. I'll live in you. And he lives through his spirit. And, and, and the Bible said that he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
Hebrews 11, 6. So by faith, man puts his faith and trust in Jesus. And Jesus saves him. The Spirit of God moves in. And now he doesn't have a fleshly mind. He has a spiritual mind to think as God would think as he allows him to have rule in his life. The fall of man and total depravity. Man fell into sin. The sixth thing is no man can love God until he's born of God. People say, oh, I, I've always loved God. No, you haven't. I, I hate to tell you this, but you haven't loved God all your life. You haven't loved God uh, before God loved you and brought you to Jesus. In 1 John chapter 4, he says this in verse 7. 1 John 4 verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God. Now listen, not that we loved him, but he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. That word propitiation means price paid. It's not that we love God so much that God loved us, but he loved us first. And look at verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. Why do I love God? Because he loved us and expressed it in Jesus Christ dying for our sins on the cross. And we have believed that, accepted him. So we haven't always loved God. The Bible says we've been enemies with God. We've been justified by faith. Those who were enemies with God have now been justified by faith. We've been reconciled, brought in peace with God. So man seeks to do right because of restraint, not training in love. You know, some people do right because they've been trained to do right. But it's not for love for God. It's because of training. Uh, depra depravity is more evident in some, but the guilt is the same. That's hard to grasp. That's hard to swallow, isn't it? But it is. For we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all failed God. One man sinned in the world, and for that all have sinned. And, and the guilt's the same, although the commission of sin may vary from man to man. We've all sinned. It's not the degree of sin. It's not the amount of sin. It's not the type of sin. It's the fact of sin. And one of the greatest sins any man ever commits is when he knows he's lost, when he knows he's a sinner, and he knows Jesus loved him and died for him and doesn't receive him as Savior, that's the greatest sin he could commit because that's going to send him to hell, to the lake of fire. So men are sinners by nature and practice. That's the seventh thing. Men are sinners by nature and practice. Look, look at the Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah the 17th chapter. Way back over in the Old Testament. The 17th chapter of Jeremiah, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can't trust your natural uh, instincts. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. He said, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You can't trust it. This is what Paul said to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 2. We alluded to these verses a while ago. He said in verse 1, And you hath he quickened. That word quickened means made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Our natural way was the course of this world, according to the devil that moves in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation. That word conversation there means lifestyle. For we had our lifestyle in the times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and mind and word of nature, the children of wrath, even as others. What did he start out saying? We've been made alive who were dead in our trespasses and sin, and we no longer walk like we used to walk in the ways of the world, but we walk in the ways of God. The fall of man in total depravity. Men are sinners by nature and practice. We come into this world with a nature of sin. We come in this world with a deceitful, dirty heart that's bent on doing wrong. Now, the eighth thing is the fallen man is unable to save himself. Uh, look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 while we're there. He said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
We're saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves. It's God's gift to us. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. Grace is undeserved favor with God. And it's not by our works, our good deeds, lest we'd have room to boast before God. When we stand before God and he says, why should I let you into heaven? You say, well, I did this, 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 and it was so good. And God says, I don't know you. Well, Lord, I, I, I repented of my sins and trusted Jesus. And that's the right answer. The book of Titus chapter three, he, he said, Paul, Paul made these statements to Titus in chapter three. And uh, verse uh, <clears throat> five, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Not by works of righteousness, we have done. We haven't done enough good to get into heaven, but God has cleansed us with the blood of Jesus and renewed us with his spirit. The last one, number nine, the fall of man brought about the death of Jesus. The fall of man, the sin of man, is why Jesus had to die. Did you realize that it's because of our sin Jesus had to die? It's your sin, my sin, I'm guilty. We're as guilty as the Roman soldiers that nailed him on the cross because it was for our sins he's dying too. In, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he said, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Who bear our sins in his own body on the cross. Being dead to sins should live under righteousness by whose stripes we're healed. Because Jesus did for that for us and now we're dead to sins. We should live righteous, holy lives. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2 and or chapter 3 and verse 18 he said, for Christ also once suffered for sins. Jesus will only die one time and the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Bring us to God through his death on the cross. The fall of man and total depravity. Man is a corrupt creature from, from his birth. We inherit a nature of sin. For one man, sin came, by one man sin came into the world, and death by sin. It's the curse that hangs over us. Not just physical, but spiritual eternal death. Cut off from God if we don't know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I'd urge you today, acknowledge to God you sinned. It's not debatable. The amount of sin is not the problem. It's sin. God has not always been first in your life, has it? Hadn't been always first in my life. That's sin. I haven't always honored God. I've looked to other things. And one of the greatest things that happened when I knew I was a sinner and needed to be saved, I said no to Jesus multiple times before I came to him and repented of my sins and trusted him. A sinful heart of rejection. May you take these words and think on them. Think on them. Next week, We'll be talking about the freeness of salvation. Salvation, the free gift of God. Be listening next Wednesday night and hear what God has to say to you about now that you know you're a sinner, how free and good salvation is. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for those who are willing to join us in this study and to listen carefully to you and your word. May, Lord, we leave uh, this uh, uh, session uh, loving you more than we ever have before serving you more than we ever have before. And if anyone out there listening is not saved, may they turn to you right now and ask you to come into their lives and forgive them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you till the next time.